Can I ask a question? What's that? What's that? It's, my, it's my wife. No, she is not. No, she is not. Uh, <laughs> Can I help you out? No, sir, you have blood all over your clothing. I'm going to help you out. Did I purposely kill my wife? Did I intentionally shoot my wife? Did I shoot my wife? Those would be questions that could be asked. This video contains the interrogation of a man who shot his pregnant girlfriend. Kendall Lee Hawk had been involved off and on over the years with Angelica Ramey, who had been a childhood friend of his sister's. The couple shared one of Angelica's five children and had recently discovered that they were expecting another. The children had all been taken away by the CPS and Hawk and Ramey began to spiral with their drug use. Without having a clear reason, Hawk shot Ramey one morning as she was folding laundry. He then called the police and told them that Ramey had shot herself by accident. Mr. Hawk, I'm Detective House. This is Detective Geiger. Okay. We want to talk to you about what happened tonight, all right? Before we do, I'm going to put a little bit of stuff here on the record. Uh, this room is audio and video recorded. There's a microphone right here. There's a camera right there in the corner, okay? I don't care about none here. Okay. Well, today's date is Monday, January 11th, 2021. The time is now 7.54 p.m. All right, Mr. Hawk. Again, what we're going to talk to you about is a shooting that happened out there at 310 Pleasant, okay? Um, have you ever had your rights read to you before? Okay. Did we have read to you on a form like this? A written form? Yeah, I mean, I just thought no, I've had them read to you. Okay, we're going to go over them right now. Can I ask a question? What's that? What's that? It's, my, it's my wife. Hawk's just been told that his fiance, Angelica Ramey, is dead. No, she is not. No, she is not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need you to have a seat up here in this chair. We need to talk about what happened, okay? Yeah. Can I help you out? No, sir, you have blood all over your clothing. I'm going to help you out. Mr. Hawk, is your last name spelled H-O-C-K? Yeah. And your first name is Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L-L? -L? Uh, yeah, yeah. Your middle name is Z? Uh, uh, e, e. Is your 81496? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Are you currently living at the house here at 310 Pleasant? Yes. We 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 bought we bought the house together. Is the zip code over there, 03? Yeah. And what's the best phone number for you, sir? talk to you about what happened tonight, okay? Yeah. We don't know what happened. I know I listened to the 911 call. You told uh, the dispatcher that she had picked up a gun and accidentally shot herself, okay? But I do know that you have a little bit of a history and there's weapons in the house. So I want you to understand your rights before we talk to you about what happened, okay? Yeah. If you look at this page in the top right corner, it says your name, social you number, date of birth. That's today's date, the time and location and then your address and phone number. Go well, down the page says your rights. You're being interviewed in regards to the crime of, and it's a shooting that we're investigating, okay? Yeah. Do you have any problem reading or writing? No. Is English your first language? Yeah. Okay. Did you graduate high school? I never went to high school. I got my GED and then did, I did some college. Okay. <laughs> All right. Follow down the page here. It says, before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. If you would, sir, to demonstrate you have no problem reading, go ahead and read number one out loud. Just number one. You have the right to remain silent. You do not have to make any statements or answer any questions. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. If you would, take the pen. Put your initials next to the number one, just showing that you understand it, and you can hold on to the pen because you're going to initial the other ones. Okay, it's right there next to number one. The detective has little to no sympathy for Hawk. As the significant other of the victim, he is automatically the main suspect. I want to read the next ones, okay? Yeah. Number two says, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, put your initials next to number two. Number three says, you have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have a lawyer with you during questioning. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, put your initials next to number three. If I can, get, just speak up to make sure that everything you say is being recorded, okay? Yeah. Way there's no misunderstandings. I understand. Okay. Number four says this. If you do not have the money to hire a lawyer, a lawyer appointed by the court or a lawyer from the public defender's office will be provided to you before and during questioning without any cost to you. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Put your initials next. Number four. And number five says, if you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Put your initials next, number five. All right. The bottom portion is what's called the waiver of rights. If you would, can you read this paragraph out loud? Starting here. The, uh, the above statement of rights has been read to me. I understand what my rights are. I am willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. No promise, no promises or threats have been made to me and no pressure or, or coercion. coercion of any kind has been used against me. Do you know what coercion means? Con convincing or something? Yeah, basically trying to convince you, like you said, or try to force you to say something or do something against your will. 
Like I could say, you know, if you don't yeah, talk to no, me, I'm going to make I, sure your I, mom loses I understand. her. I understand. Okay, do so you understand that? Do you agree that we haven't promised you anything? We haven't threatened yeah, you? No, no. Okay. Oh. Now, I know you said uh, you did not finish high school. So here it says I've completed blank years of schooling. Just write GED in that line, if you would, right there, GED. All right, Mr. Hope, you want to talk to us about what happened? Yeah. Okay, if you would, just sign it right here on this piece of paper. She's really gone. She is. I'm, I'm sorry, but she is. <laughs> <laughs> do you prefer Kindle or do you go by anything else? I just go by Kindle. Okay. <laughs> And to start off, just, just tell me a little bit about <laughs> Angelica. <laughs> How long have you and her been together? Uh, over, over a year, going on two years. For one year, going on two? Yeah. How did you guys meet? I've known her my whole life. She, she was one of my sister's best friends growing up. What's your sister's name? Christina Robinson. Does Christina still live here locally? No, she's in prison. Okay. What's she in prison for? For drugs. Drugs. Like his sister, Hawk has also served time on drug-related charges. I just released another extremely intense interrogation on my Patreon. This time about a son of a millionaire being interrogated for the death of his father. His trial was the longest and most expensive trial in the history of St. John. Watch it right now at patreon.com backslash stranger stories plus. Does Angelica go by any other names? Yeah, uh, yeah. She goes by Jelly. Jelly? Jelly. Is that what you usually call her? Yeah. Now, she has children, correct? Yeah. Do you guys have any children together? Yes. You do? Yes. Okay. How many children do you guys have together? Uh, one. One? The, the rest of them call me daddy, but we have one that's ours. Okay. And how old is that child? She's under a year old. Okay. What's her name? Stella. Stella Hawk. Stella and the Anna. Leanna Hawk. And then you know Stella's birthday? I'm going to say it's 2 two twenty-seven twenty. 20. And where does Stella live right now? All, 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 the, all the children are with CPS. How many other children does she have? Four. Do you know their names and ages? Yeah. What are their names and ages? Yeah. There's, there's Dominic and Connor. Those are the, those are the twins. Okay. They're boys. Is it O R or E R for Connor? Yeah, it's C O N N O O C O N N O R. Okay. You know how old they are? They're both four They're twins. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember their exact birthday. That's fine. Do you know what last name they go by? Roe. R-O-W-E. Okay. What about the other two children? Uh, they they got different last names. It's Bonnie. What Bonnie is it? And Bonnie. Okay. B-O-N-N-I-E. You know Bonnie's last name? Yeah, it's... Uh, Keen, K E E T E O N. Okay. And how old is Bonnie? I want to say she's eight, seven or eight. Okay. I want to say eight. Mm -hmm. 
And what about the uh, other child? It's Jennifer Keaton. How old is Jennifer? She's nine. You say all of those children are in custody of CPS? Yeah. How long have they been in custody of CPS? Uh, just a couple months. Okay. What's going on with you all that the, that the children are with CPS? The, uh, a lady came out to the house and she had asked if we would let the kids come out onto the porch and seeing their ages and mm -hmm. that they're boys and girls the lady had asked <clears throat> hold on I, just, I gotta catch my breath the, the lady had asked if we would let the kids come outside onto the porch and for her to be able to look for bruises on their like under their shirts and stuff and I told the lady that that sent a red flag for me because she was asking for us to have our children come out in the cold and take their shirts off mm -hmm. and I felt like she was a pedophile and that anybody could make the CPS badge that she had one. Okay. So she left. She, the next time she came back. That is not how CPS handles that type of check. But Hawk likely isn't being honest about the visit. Before she had left the first time I said that if you are with CPS to have a different caseworker come out and the same lady came back out she, nobody knew ever came so we had never had a phone call from CPS or nothing I didn't believe the lady worked through CPS and the jelly didn't want her to want her as the caseworker if she did because she was asking the kids to come outside and take their shirts off in broad daylight. Okay. Did she bring law enforcement with her or anything when she came to the house? She only brought law enforcement the day that she came to, to take the that kids. That remove the children? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Um, how long did you guys live there uh, on Pleasant? I got, I got out of prison in March and we bought the we bought the house whatever month comes after March. Okay. How long were you in prison? Six months. What was that for? Uh, a gun charge that, that I had got back in 15. Okay. Who was actually buying the house? Was both of you buying the house together? or? I was buying it for her. You were buying it for her? Yeah. I put it in her name. And the only reason my name wasn't on the deed was because I didn't have an ID. Who was in the other half of the double? My mother and my grandmother. That's your mother? Yeah. There was a, there was a female that's on the 911 call that had come out of the court. Is that your mother? That's my grandma. That's your grandmother? Yeah. What's your mother's name? Noel. What's her last name? Robinson. And what's your grandmother's name? Judy. What's her last name? Robinson. Okay. They live in the 308 half? Yeah. How long have they lived there? Since we moved in. So you guys all kind of moved in together at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, when I I caught my case years ago, mm -hmm. and I was doing probation, and my probation limited my business because I, have, I flip houses and cars for a living. And when me and her had gotten together, I wanted to be able to not have to benefit or not have to drag her life down by me being held back by being on probation. Mm -hmm. So I told my PO to go ahead and send me up to finish me up so that I could be done on papers and I could go on with my business. So when I, when I told my PO to send me to prison so that I could be done with probation, my mom and my grandmother moved in with Angelica at her previous address, which was 30 South Jersey, where me and her had lived for a little over a year. 
when I went to prison, my mom and grandmother moved in with her. And then when I got out of prison on March 10th or March 11th, which she had already gotten her income tax for the previous year, so we used we used that money to go towards buying the next house. That's we bought the double so that my family wasn't all in the same side of the house as us. Okay. All right. What um you and Jelly, what's your guys' relationship been like? How long have you guys actually been together? Yeah. You said you've known her your entire life. I've, I've known her my entire life. And we've we've been together, I would say, right around two years. Okay. We've messed around on and off over the years, but we've actually lived together for the last two years. The relationship between Hawk and Ramey had been erratic over the years, and although they had remained together through the birth of one child, that didn't mean they were stable. You guys have any issues, any problems? You guys fight a lot? We, we have small arguments about her job, and that's under the, the circumstance that she, she works harder than what she was paid for. What did she do? She was at Burger King as a crew leader, but she pulled, she pulled every responsibility as the manager in some. Mm -hmm. The only thing we would ever argue about would be the fact that I'd tell her, like, you deserve better than what they pay you. Other than that, there, there wasn't no arguments. Is there any type of uh, domestic violence history in the past, anything? No. Nothing that would show up at all? No. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened today. What was going on with you guys today? Well, we had we woke up, you know, I, I want to say it was around 3.30 or so. We had woke up, was cleaning the house a little bit. I went to go upstairs and go to take a shower. <laughs> as soon as I turned my water on, she came up there and blew it up. So I ended up <laughs> going next door. What do you mean? What do you mean by she blew it up? <laughs> she, she she went up there and as soon as I went to get in the shower, she went upstairs and took a shit. Okay. And kind of ran me out of the bathroom. Okay. So I went I went next door and I went to the shower over there. And, and when I, you say next door, you went over to your mom's the other half. Yeah, I went over to the other half of the double, and it took a shower. And then I went back home on to our side, mm -hmm. and she had already started doing the laundry. She was in the basement, and she was doing the laundry. And then I went. Up, I was upstairs. I yelled for her and I asked her if she wanted anything to eat because I was getting ready to leave. And she told me to hold on. She was coming upstairs. Where were you heading to? I was getting ready to go to McDonald's and get something. Okay. Because we usually get a frappe every day. It's kind of the one thing that I was able to do for her that she couldn't do anyways. So she had told me to hold on that she wanted to go with me. So I advised, wait a minute. I literally just lit a cigarette. And... She said she had to get dressed, but she started to pick all the blankets and stuff up because we we was sleeping in the living room. We was up, and I guess we both passed out, but we sleep upstairs because that's where the TV works. You talking about like, when you say upstairs, you mean like the living room? In the, yeah, in the living room. Okay. Because our bed's in the basement. Okay. And she wanted to get the floor cleaned up, and we had checked the emails because the caseworker and we had found out that he wasn't going to be at our visit but we were still going to get our visit on Wednesday and then she had started pretty much grabbing all the stuff off the couch from where I was asleep and where she was asleep next to me. Which couch is that? From the living room door you have the couch along the if you're left wall and the couch along the right wall? If, if you're going in our front door it was on the right wall. Okay. So it would be against the wall that separates your house and your mom's house? Yeah, the okay. dividing wall. And she was grabbing all the blankets and stuff up from right there. And you heard a boom. And I was at the front door. I turned around. And she had already dropped the blankets back down. 
and that was when I'd seen the, the gun sitting in the blanket. And if you look across the living room, there was the gun case that had <coughs> three tattoo guns in it, which it was they were cut out in the foam was the three tattoo guns, but she had the case the 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 magnum win it the three fifty seven mm -hmm. yeah I guess we had it out last night or fell asleep with it out I thought it was in the case and apparently she did too the case was on the couch by the front door so in that plastic gun case because I was out your house just momentarily yeah um on the couch that's against the east wall or the left wall there was a plastic hard plastic gun case yeah that has like i think a lime green it's, lock it still something. had the lock on it okay yeah. you're saying that that has tattoo guns in it yeah if you open it up it's foam that's kind of like, like this, this yeah but it, but it's you say it's cut out for the guns to lay in well not it's the the wavy kind okay, of, I'll call but it. it had a cut out for one two and three tattoo guns mm -hmm. but when we get when we bought them through 57 it fit in there because of his previous convictions hawk should not have been in possession of a weapon with the tattoo guns also yeah it would still fit in there it would still fit in there okay well the, the only thing i can think is we had forgot to put it in there or, or something but when she went to start picking up the blankets and stuff, that was when I heard it. And she she seemed okay. She turned around and she turned around and looked at me. And that was when I I, I seen it. Was, she started coming towards me, and I grabbed her. And I put my hand over, I put my hand over her shoulder, and I looked at her back. And at the time, I couldn't make out if she was bleeding out of the backside or not. But she, she wanted to start going out the front door, and I was trying to hold on to her, and, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't dial out fast enough. I couldn't get the front to dial out and keep up with her, and she, she buckled on the front porch. And that was that was when I went over and I got on top of her and I put my hand down on her and I hold and I just kept telling her to breathe. And that was when I finally got the phone to unlock because our lock pattern. I finally got it to unlock and call out to nine one one. And I I was sitting there and, and she she was she was still breathing just rough. And all I could do was sit there trying to hold the pressure on her. That I, I, it took a second. I ran next door to my grandma's porch, and I slung the door open, and I screamed for my grandma to just please come help, please, please come help, and went back to Jelly. Then I sat there until the cops showed up. So you mentioned the three fifty seven. You say you you may have had it out the night before or fell asleep with it. Tell me about. Why the gun we, was out? We had just bought it. Just bought it when? Uh, within the last 24 hours. Huck bought the gun himself the day before, and the police believe he did so with the intention of murdering Ramey. Where'd you get it at? Uh, from one of her co-workers. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Who's that? Uh, I don't know his last name. His, his first name's Adrian. And I don't even care if he gets in trouble for this. At this point, I done lost my... Lost so Adrian works at Burger King? Yeah, it's her manager. Which Burger King are we talking about? On Brown Street. Okay. The, the, way, the way the system, the government has been, you know, we've been, we've been lightweight stockpiling on on firearms okay. and so on just in case it was ever needed and she only said it's better to be safe than sorry how much did you pay for this 257 250 dollars 
And describe the 357, what's it look like? Uh, it's a solid chrome. It's real heavy. It's got wooden grip, but it looked new. Got a long barrel on it? Yeah, long barrel. It's six shots. Have you ever fired it before? Once. Next door. I shot the backyard of the neighbors. When was that? When we first bought it and got home. So that'd be yesterday? Yeah, roughly. But I, it was the middle of the night. We can go to my neighbors and I can still show you where we was in his back kitchen door and shot out of the back kitchen door into the ground and it, it blew a hole in the dirt. Your neighbor was with you? Yeah. Okay. Which neighbor are we talking about? To the, if you're looking at my house, it would be the ones on the left and they're Cuban and I don't think that they're even really legal yet. Okay. But it, it's kind of always been something like they've never really had guns. And I was, I go over there and usually shoot off a couple rounds in the backyard when we get something new. Okay. Why don't you shoot them off in your backyard? Truthfully, it's it's kind of like a, uh, like a show it off thing. Okay. It's, they, they, they think it's cool. Me and the old lady usually go <coughs> there and just, I mean, the only word I can think of is stunt. Like, you know, it's like she would walk over there and have a gun on her hip, and, you know, or just, yeah. yeah. How many guns do you guys have in the house? Uh, I want to say there's two revolvers that don't work. The revolver that shot her, and then a, a shotgun that don't work. So only one operable gun? That I know of, yeah. Where's the other two revolvers and the shotgun? They was in the gun locker with a with a stab proof vest. Where's that at? It was it would be in the basement. Does that lock or have a lock on it? Yes. Do you know where the keys are at? Uh, and and I want to say an officer at my house grabbed the keys. What do the keys look like? It's it's just one key and it's. I mean, it, it really it just looks like a regular house door key, but it's got black plastic on the handle part. Okay. What about the key to that gun box that has the tattoo gun? Like some different keys. Do you know where the keys are to hit? Yeah. Where are those keys at? They would be on a... It's an all-black keychain. That It's got like a... A little rope thing with skulls on it that hangs okay. off. There's two car keys and two car key fobs. Even if Hawk's story had been true, he would still be facing multiple charges, including improperly storing a firearm in a home with children. They go to the different cars, and then there's real, real small keys that are no bigger than an inch that go to the green lock. Okay. There's two of them that are identical. All right. So, what's the last thing you remember doing with this gun last night before you guys went to bed or fell asleep? I can't even remember. Uh, I remember I was next door. We'd shot it out of their back door you know how many shots you fired over there? One. Okay. It was just to make sure that it worked. Okay. And then after that, I I want to say that I I went back home and set it on the table. Do you know if it was fully loaded or? It 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 had rounds in it, but it wasn't full. I know there was one missing. Not counting the one I shot. Mm, okay. And the, when I say the one that I shot, I mean as in regards of out back of my neighbors. So that when I went back home, there was two shots that was missing out of it, and that was because one was never 
it, it was never in the gun. Okay, so it should be two empty cylinders, basically, for spots out of six shots. Yeah. One fired and one empty. Yes, and they're they're not the the right bullets in the gun. They're from a thirty eight special. I just found the bullets. If like if you look in my locker and the, the gun safe in the basement, mm -hmm. there's bullets that are multiple different calibers that we don't have the gun to. That it was kind of like if a friend had the bullets, we would buy them in regards to if we find this gun, since ammo is hard to get, mm -hmm. we was trying to stock up on anything just in case the government did go downhill and it was every man for their self. So again, so you came back over from the neighbors, you fired the gun, and what did you do with it? You said you think you laid it on the table? Yeah, I want to say that I, that I laid it, if, you're, if the front door is where he's sitting, the couch by the by the separating wall mm -hmm. there's the the table in the middle of the room and then there's the table right here in the corner it would have been right there and then after that i, I, I went to bed do you know how in any way that that gun would have got onto the couch with the covers yeah or the blankets not offhand I, I, I know when I went to bed, there wasn't even a blanket on me. I remember waking up, and I, I had to take a piss. And I remember waking up and being covered up. And she, she, she didn't, she wouldn't lay on the couch with me for some reason. She was laid on the floor next to me, with a blanket and pillow, like she made a bed on the floor. And I remember I woke up sometime. I don't even remember when I woke up, and I told her to get on the couch with me. That if if I accidentally stepped on her because I had to hurry up and take a piss, then it it wasn't on purpose. And when I came back, she was on the couch, but wasn't laying down. So I stretched back out, and I fell back asleep. And the next time I woke up, she was laid back on the floor again on the pallet that she had made. When you woke up today, 3.30 or whatever, did you ever see the gun? Did you see the gun anywhere today? No. You said you guys were up cleaning it. She was cleaning. No, the the most, the, to the extent of cleaning was me getting up, going upstairs to the bathroom, start my shower water. She came in, started pooping. And I was, at that point, I was joking with her about the smell. So I grabbed my towel and clothes and went next door and took a shower. By the time I came back, she was the one that had started the cleaning and had started making phone calls like every other day. You know, we'd call the caseworker, we try to talk to the kids, and so on. Or she was calling work to try and figure out her hours because she's been having problems with them giving her hours, and so on. Ramey was completely unaware of what was going to happen and went about her morning routine as usual. She never had time to put up a fight. And I came back in from next door and made me a bowl of cereal and I, I ended up eating the bowl of cereal and we was still just sitting down at that point. And you never saw the gun anywhere? No. I, I mean, I, I can try to re-picture in my head but I still don't see it nowhere. Even, even when I think back to last night, all I can remember is setting it on the table. Okay. Explain to me again, go through again how, what she was doing when the gun went off. She, she was bundling all the blankets on the couch together. And kind of like just bundled them up, scooping them in her arm. Yeah. She, that, I mean, that, that was it. She, she was just grabbing all the blankets. What together. type of blankets are we talking about? The big, big cover set. How many blankets were on the couch? I want to say at least two. What color? What type of material? I mean, silky material, purple, white. <laughs> Real quick for me here, just kind of. Just kind of show me what she was doing. Say, for example, 
this is the couch, okay? This is the couch, that's the wall that's separating your your house and your mom's house. The door's over here, correct? Right. There's a door, there's a couch right over here. Yeah. The box that has the tattoo stuff and it's over here, correct? Yeah. There's a table here between the two, is yeah. that right? Yeah, there's a camo table in the middle of the room. Yeah, so just kind of demonstrate to me as she's at the couch, the way she's facing, what she's doing, how she scoops these up when the gun goes off. She's kind of more up on the end of this side of the couch, uh -huh. where like my head would have been, and she was throwing the pillows back up because there's big brown pillows that go on the couch. She was throwing them back up towards that side, and she had scraped like like she was bringing the blanket this way, and she turned around and looked at me because I was you know making jokes with like mm -hmm. as in maybe I wasn't done laying down and. She came over and started scooping the blanket up this way, and when she grabbed it like that, it was like she started to turn around, and then I heard the bang, and I so, was in the dining room. So she room. just like basically scooped the blankets up, like so was, her arms are underneath the blanket. Yeah, it was like she, like she balled the blankets up, and I started walking back towards the kitchen. And that was where like, her are where are her arms at? I would her arms would have been up under all the blankets. So they're, they're down here holding all the blankets in this area, kind yeah. of pressed against her chest, basically. Yes, and literally, I, I'd seen her start scooping the blankets up, and at that point, I was walking back through the doorway towards the kitchen area mm -hmm. because our our back door don't all the way shut, and I was walking back that way because you could feel a draft through the whole house, and. Uh, I mean, it, it's uh, like it's fragmented. All I all I can remember is her grabbing the blankets and then hearing the boom. And when I got in there, I I, I seen her drop, and then you could see the gun. And I grabbed the gun and threw it to the other couch. And Where was the gun? Hawk demonstrates Ramey's movements. The detective wants to see if his story changes and whether or not it matches up with the forensics. The gun was sitting on the couch. And at, at that point, she, like, I don't want to sit on your table or nothing, but at that point, she was sitting on the couch like this, and the gun would have been beside her. I grabbed the gun, I threw it to the other couch. Where were all the blankets at? They, they was kind of under her, as if she had set them back down and sat on top of them. Okay. All right. Have a seat back in the chair. Sorry. You're fine. Were you guys arguing today at all about money? Uh, we we mentioned getting with the rent paid because she she delays everything she does. She don't like to pay stuff on time. Mm -hmm. I'm more the type I'd rather pay it on time so that we have a grace period if we don't have the money. I wouldn't necessarily say we was arguing. I would. I would say that I might have bitched at her saying that she needs to grow up a little bit and learn how to pay her bills in time. And that was it. We don't we don't have money issues though. I literally just prior to that, when I got out of the shower next door, I'd handed my grandma a fifty dollar bill to put on my sister's books in prison. Like we we don't have issues with money and That's that was one reason why I never understood why she would wait to pay a bill. But no, we we didn't argue to that extent, <coughs> to that extent about it. Yeah. It's not like we're behind on a single bill or anything like that. No, we we never really argued much. So you stated this, so I'm correct. She's up here at the head of the, the couch. She's kind of tossed the pillows and she scoops up the, 
the blankets and she stands and she starts to turn this way when you hear the shot she, she had started to turn around and at that point i was walking out of the room so you're going this way and back toward the kitchen right and i get not even five steps and i hear boom and as soon as i hear that i turn back around and she was already reseated half like halfway on the couch and was starting to, like she was trying to get back up and that was as I was coming in the room I seen the, the revolver I threw it to the other couch and she was still trying to get back up so I had helped her up Held, I knew it had something told me to just I knew to hold pressure and check for an exit hole when I looked I didn't see nothing but I, it was hard to tell while keeping pressure on on her sh shoulder area. Where did you see where she was struck at? She was struck right here. Okay. Did you see any exit wounds on her back at all or anything? I, I, I thought I did, but I'm not sure. Where did you think you saw an exit wound? Yeah. Honestly, it, it it looked like there was blood on her, on her back in the same spot, but I, I couldn't make out if that was from where I tried to apply pressure and then looked, I, I, I couldn't make that out. All I knew is that for a fact it went in right there. And I know that she, I don't, I don't know what she was trying, whether she was trying to get in a car, I'm not sure. I just know she was going towards the door when I helped her back up and was applying pressure on her shoulder. This excuse is used to cover up Ramey's attempt to escape. She was going towards the door, so I followed her while screaming for my grandmother. What was she doing just prior to going over to the couch and group up the <clears throat> blankets? Was she, were you guys talking? Was she saying anything? Prior to that? Yeah, as, he she, walked in, as she walks over to the couch, just tossing the pillows and scoops up the money, is she saying anything to you? Are you guys no. saying anything? Is she prior, prior, talking? Is she whistling, singing? Prior to cleaning? that, prior to that, I mean, I was... I just handed her my wallet, and I had all my money in it, and I, I told her, there's $220, not counting the 50 that I gave Grandma, and, you know, it was kind of like any other day, okay, well, you know, we can, we can pay this, or, I mean, that's, it was kind of just like a normal day, there, we don't, we don't have a way to play music, there's a radio in the living room, but it don't work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we kind of just... Why did you give her your wallet? Because I had all the cash. Again, you guys weren't fighting about money? No. Arguing about money? No. She had, she had said something about how she had made a payment towards the rent, like of a hundred or something. Mm -hmm. So, I'd give her my wallet to... Basically, I had stated the difference that was owed still to the payment was in my wallet. And she's, she said that she didn't need it and set my wallet back up by the TV. Yeah. And after that, I, I grabbed it, started walking through the back of the, like towards the back of the house again. And that was when I heard it. So you fired that, that handgun, correct? The night before. Okay. How tough is that trigger pull? It's not. Not at all? Yeah. I mean, did you cock it first? Or did you full draw? When I shot it out of the neighbors, it, it had to be cocked. What do you mean by had to be cocked? You had to? Yeah, I, I had, to, I had to, to pull the hammer back. When I fired it next door, yes. So like you kind of pull it back, click it, and then pull the trigger, or it off? Yes. To get it to drop? Yes. Is that because that's the only way it would work, or is this because I, the trigger I'm, squeeze was so hard? I'm, I'm not sure, okay. honestly. How do you think that gun went off? Because generally those, <coughs> especially those large revolvers like that, have a pretty significant trigger weight. The weapon used to shoot Ramey would not have gone off in the scenario that Hawk has described. The detective doesn't bother to hide his skepticism. Truthfully, I, I don't know. 
the only thing I can think is it got knocked onto the couch while I was asleep, or I mean, the the I mean somehow the the hammer maybe got halfway pulled back when she was grabbing the blankets, but not enough to lock, and then like slipped and hit the I I I don't know. All I know is I'm losing the love of my life and the mother of my children. Well, uh, Sunday, Kendall, it's pretty damn hard for those revolvers to go off by themselves by accident. I know. Because I it know. is pretty significant trigger pull usually. I know. Now, I haven't seen your gun per se. We haven't tested it. Which that's one thing we'll do. We'll test the trigger pull. Uh, it's also pretty hard. I mean, like I said, you've shot it. You know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. pretty hard to get that uh, hammer pulled back by catching on something if you're just scooping it with the off. All right. I, you know, I agree. No, I, 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 I definitely, I do agree with you that it's not easy to just fire one of them guns. I, 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 I do. I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I'm, I'm big in my life is gun safety because I've lost multiple of my relatives to this. My cousin Mikey rushed, shot himself in the head on an accident years before that. Andy rushed, he got shot in the head cleaning a gun. These incidents might have inspired Hawk to use this to explain Ramey's death. And I, I just, one thing that I've always been big on is gun safety because of the relatives I've lost. And I know that the way this is all played out, I know it looks like I did it. Did you shoot her? I did. No. Did she shoot herself intentionally? I, I, I want to say no. no. I mean, you saw what happened. Did she grabbed she grab the gun and put it to her chest and pulled the trigger? Not that I see of, no. I'm not saying that I know for a fact she didn't do that, but I'm saying I know for a fact that when I was turning out of that room, all I seen was her grabbing the blankets off the couch. And that was the last that I seen of her, but she wasn't torn out. She was removed from the scene before I got out there. But I was told that she did have an exit wound. And it was in her lower back. Do you have any idea how her scooping the blankets up and no. the bullet going in down here could come out of her lower back? I don't know. I don't either. I'm, I'm, I won't say that I'm a professional with guns, and I won't say that I know how they work to that extent. So I'm telling you, it's pretty will, unusual. What I will say is that that woman was the love of my life and the mother of my children, and we are currently fighting CPS to get our children back. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I want is to lose my children or to, to lose the love of my life. Using expressions such as the love of my life is surprisingly common among murderers during their interrogations. And I know for a fact on everything in my life that I did not shoot her. What about, I don't know what happened with this incident back in 2017 over on uh, Andrews when you got mad at your girlfriend and fired several rounds into the fire pit in the backyard. That wasn't, that wasn't what had went on. The what? That wasn't what had went on. I'm sorry, it was a Nassau lady, right? Uh, it Andrews was, it was at my previous address at 19 Andrews. 19 Andrews. So I what lived, happened? That's what you told the officers. I lived alone, and truthfully, I was selling drugs at the time, mm -hmm. and I was trying to tell the officer anything I could to get out of the predicament. If you look further into the case, you could see that I'd, I'd done house arrest. I'd done multiple programs, and that was why I told my probation officer to send me up to prison back when I, in September and then I got out in March it was so that I could get past that and get that done within my life. I was caught with multiple drugs. I had over 
a pound of drugs on me at that point in time, but the only thing that I ever got charged with was a quarter ounce of cocaine. There was nobody in my house. The police went in my house and even inspected my property that same day. Wasn't nobody there. So when you told the officers that you were, got into it with your girlfriend and you went outside and fired several rounds in the fire pit, that wasn't true? I did say that I had got into it with my girlfriend, but I didn't fire at nobody. I would fired into the ground. Yeah, in the and fire pit, right? Into around the fire pit. Yes, out of my vehicle. That has been years ago, and that's a different time of period in my life. It was 2017. That's three years ago. It was more than three years ago, and I promise you that because I did, I did two years on probation before 2017. March 7th, 2017 is when it was. I realized this. That's three years ago. I know. Maybe three years or four years and a couple months. Yeah. You know you aren't supposed to have guns, right? I know. Yeah, you're stockpiling guns? It was something that she... I, I didn't see a problem with it, with the way she had laid it out. Is if, if the government was to crash, we're going to need something to protect our children. There is no evidence to suggest Ramey ever thought they needed to stockpile weapons. I couldn't turn that down. I couldn't, I couldn't deny that. I got my 65-year-old elderly grandmother next door with my mother, and I'm, I'm the only male in the entire household. I can't sit here and tell them all that I, I can. I can protect all of you on my own, including all of the children on my own. There's no way that I could do that. And when she came to me and said that, that she, she wanted something that said that she knew she was going to be safe, I was all about it. She had even started to take a class down at Shoot Point Blank Shooting Range. She was scheduled to start next month to get her CCW. I have to tell you, Kendall, I have a very hard time buying your story, man. I, I know. I know. Honestly. The evidence, is, it, the evidence isn't matching up with what you're saying happened. I know. But uh, there's, there's, there's nothing else that I could say besides what, what had happened. Let me tell you this. You know where she was shot, right? She was shot in her shoulder, yes, yeah, right here. You know where the bullet was recovered? No, I, oh. I don't. In the, damn near in the floorboard. That's how much a downward trajectory there was. How does that happen if you're scooping up blankets and your arms, everything's underneath here? How does that happen? I don't know. I don't either. Like I said, all I know... Something I can't explain. All I know is when I was leaving the room, she had grabbed the blankets and... I, I, at that point, I was already turned around leaving the room. You can't make that gun go off accidentally like that. I'm not saying that. I... You can't. The detective calls Hawk out. There is no way Ramey could have died in such a way. I've looked on, on everything I love. I have told you the truth from my point of view and from what I know happened. I don't want the truth from your point of view. I want the truth. So... I mean, you laid on that floor and put on a nice show, but not a single tear came out of your eyeball. Okay. Not a single tear came out of your eye. Okay. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take you across the hall. We're going to go back over there and put you in that room for a little bit. Okay. Myself and Detective Geiger will run out to your house. We've already obtained a search warrant. There's officers out there searching. We're going to look through some different things, see if anything matches up to your story, and then we'll be back to continue this, okay? That's Let me ask fine. you a couple questions real quick. Are you driving up I'm right handed. I noticed on your right hand there, you've got like some marks on your knuckles there, your middle finger. That's, your... that's blood. Is that blood? Yeah, it's Not blood. Like a scrape or anything? No, there's, 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 right there? there's blood there. You know, there might be blood, but it looked like you kind of scraped your knuckles yeah. or something from here. No. That, that doesn't look like, you know, someone else's blood. That's That right there on top, right here. Knuckles. What's that? That's, that's, that's blood. That's just dry blood? Yeah, from... When I was trying to get her out of the house. Okay. Yeah, I thought it looked like an older scrape to me. And you also said you took a shower, but your hands look pretty dirty. How did your hands get so dirty? <laughs> Just like how my knees get so dirty. And how was that? 
This is strictly from falling on the ground after the police mandatorily made me move. Okay. There's blood right here on me. There's blood here on me. There's blood all over it right here on me from where I was trying to help her out of the house. She wanted out of the house. I was trying to help her out of the house. I didn't know what else to do at this point. All I know is that she, she had a hole in her chest. Hawk continues his emotional performance, but he is wasting his energy. There was there was nothing I could do besides try to apply pressure and, and call the law. And it seemed like forever that it even took someone to get there. But so back to the thing on your fingers, so I don't know how that happened. There's no scratch there. I promise you, if we wipe this blood off right now and wipe that dirt off from outside, there's no scratches. I, I, I know this for a fact. I have a, a bunch of scar tissue on my hand from being in a house fire. That's what all this is from. I was in a house fire, and that should be on record too. All right, you say you bought the gun from her manager, Adrian? Yeah. And you paid $250 for it, right? Yep. And you did that last night, correct? It was either last night or the night before. I know that I've been, we've been asleep for the majority of the day. I know, like I said, we'd woke up around 3, 3.34. You guys using anything? Huh? You guys using anything? Yeah. What are you using? Meth and marijuana. When was the last time you used meth? Uh, the day before yesterday. Although Hawk stated earlier that he had turned his life around, that doesn't appear to be the case. You got any in the house? No. No, I had I had some weed and it was it was in my pocket. And I'd give it to an officer as soon as, as soon as I got in there. There was there was maybe a part of a blunt on the table. You guys both using? Yeah. Now you said last night that uh, after you shot the gun, you put it on the table next to the couch, correct? That I recall, yes. That's what you recall? And after that, I I was asleep. Okay. And I know that when I had fell, fallen asleep, I was using one of the bigger pillows for a blanket. And when I'd woke up sometime throughout the throughout the night or throughout the day because I was asleep most of the day, I know that when I'd woken up, she was on a pallet next to me on the floor, and I'd said something to her because I didn't want to step on her when I was getting ready to go take a piss. Why, uh, why didn't Jolie make a pallet on the floor? That's I I, I honestly I don't know. So it's it's something that she she would frequently do. Okay. It's. I mean, like, if, if say, say, if we made dinner, she would, <coughs> she would make, she would make everybody else's plate before her own. If, if there was dirty laundry, she would make sure that everybody else's clothes got washed before her own. If, I mean, it, it didn't matter what it was, anything that involved putting others first doesn't explain why Ramey would choose to sleep on the floor when there were other options available. Anybody else in this world. No matter what, anybody and everybody came before she. If, if you were sitting on a couch and she thought that her sitting next to you would make you uncomfortable, she wouldn't sit next to you. I mean, you can, you can go next door and ask my mother and ask my grandmother. She, she would do anything in the world to just, to just please. Why didn't she just sleep on the other couch? Because that was her way of still being able to sleep, sleep next to me. I don't know. And I would tell her to get on the couch with me. And I don't know. I just, I know that she would go out of her way to try and make somebody else more comfortable or happier. And she would always assume that she was bothering somebody. And I mean, if if I was on the front porch smoking a cigarette, she would walk out there and I, I would simply turn around and acknowledge that she walked out. She, she would say, oh, you know, my bad, and da da da, I mean, just anything. She she always felt, she always felt like she was doing something wrong. 
and I, I never understood that. And my, my mom, my grandma, my sister, anybody can tell you that she, her, her biggest her biggest fault and her only fault was assuming she was always doing something wrong. How long have you been thinking about buying that gun for two hundred fifty dollars? Not at all. I never even knew about it till the night we got it. Well, how'd that come about? How, how we was going to sell a gun. We'd went and we'd we'd sold Adrian a gun. In the process. A buddy of his pulled that one out. She had said she liked it. And that was when the, the the 250 that we had gotten for the other gun, I just handed straight back to him. And we had left with that gun. What kind of gun did you sell? Another 9. You said what, another 9? What brand? This is a nine millimeter Taurus. Where did that gun come from? Uh, some kid down at the Dayton Twin Towers. Now, truthfully, I'd only bought it because the kid couldn't have been no older than 17 or 18 years old. And he's he, he, he has other guns. I just... I didn't feel like that kid needed that gun, so I bought it. So you're stockpiling weapons for the collapse of the government. You think it's smart to give up a high capacity nine millimeter to, for a six shot revolver? No. Me either. But I also know that with our kids, before we lost the kids, one of the boys had gotten a hold of a gun and shot it in the basement. That was when we got the gun safe. Earlier, Hawk claimed that losing family members in gun-related situations had made him very careful with weapon safety. He then expects the detectives to believe he brought multiple guns into a home with young children without a way to secure them. And if, if you look in the gun safe and you open the door, in the bottom of it, there's a metal tube that's a gun cleaning kit. Mm -hmm. One of the boys had shot the gun cleaning kit. There's a hole in the side of it. I have no reason to lie at all. And I know that I'll probably never see my children again. But the only thing I can do right now is honest. And if you look in the bottom of that gun safe, you'll see where there's a hole in the bottom. And I knew that any semi-automatic, any sort of handguns, I knew that them boys knew how to fire it. I've, I've been real big on teaching the kids how to handle a firearm. I know that's probably not the correct thing to do. But basically what you're saying is the fact that it's much harder for a revolver that's, that's, to be fired by a child. That's why we made sure that we didn't keep the, like, the, the automatic or the semi-automatic weaponry. We tried, like, that's why there's the, the two revolvers that don't work, that we was going to order parts for them so that they would. But we went that route because we know that there's more you have to do to fire it. Okay. Here's the thing, kind of like what Detective House was saying. I mean, this, what you're describing really does not match her injury. Uh, I, I, okay. I, I hear what you're saying. And, you know, but, even you admit yeah. that, you know, the reason that she had the revolver was because it's harder to shoot. Yeah. So an accidental thing like this would be extremely unlikely. Yeah, but it's not impossible. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that it's impossible. All I am saying is that I didn't shoot the love of my life. And I know that you guys don't believe me. I don't think there was anything deliberate here. I'm going to tell you that right now. I don't think that you got up this morning and said, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to murder Jelly. I don't think you said that. But there's a problem when she has injuries 
that don't match how you're asking, how you're saying this took place. I don't know how it even took place. All I know is that she was picking the blankets up in the living room, and I turned around to hear a bang. That's what. That's all I know. Well, I, I think that she probably was picking up blankets. I think that part's probably true. <laughs> Interrogate me all you want, but I'm the one that's at a loss here today. Not doubting that either. <laughs> She's got five children at a loss. I know. Too. Trust me, I know this. You want us to believe something that's pretty damn unbelievable. It's a, it's unbelievable to me. That's what you don't realize. As much as you guys don't want to believe it, I don't want to believe this either. I want to believe whatever. You want us, like I said, you want us to believe something that's unbelievable. We can't, how can we believe that story? That's all I know. There's no way her hands are down here scooping up blankets, and she's shot up here, and it comes out her lower back, and goes into the baseboard. <sighs> that's an impossibility. So then you're telling me that my fiance's still alive right now. No, she's dead. Yeah, I mean, that's not an impossibility. I, 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 I can't. The impossibility is the angle and the shot. Uh, That's the impossibility from what you described. I, 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 can't, How, you, I can't explain something that I don't know. You, you said yesterday you had to cock the damn gun. Yeah, I did. The trigger. I did just shoot it out of my neighbor's back door. How's that gun go off when you're scooping up a blanket? Even if her finger got on the trigger. I, I don't know. If her finger was on the trigger, I bet you she couldn't pull the trigger. I, honestly, I don't know. And I, I, I'll probably... I'll probably die, and nobody will ever believe me. That's, I guess, that's what it's going to have to be because it, it is. It's, it, well, like it's, I said, un, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty un, unbelievable story right now. It, it's, it's unbelievable to me that we just woke up this morning and. Uh, it just. I don't know. I don't have words for, for, for what happened. I, I don't. I don't. I, I can't explain something that I. So if somebody said you guys were arguing over money today, that would be a misperceived. You weren't really arguing. You were just what, having a discussion over money. But you weren't arguing over money today. We wasn't arguing over no money today. We go every day. We wake up. We discuss what bills are to be paid, or how long we had to pay a bill, and then it's on to the next thing as call the caseworker. So when did you give her your wallet? I give her my wallet every day. She she makes sure that she pays the bills out of her money, and if there's ever something that she needs extra, you guys have money it. coming in every day. Me, yes, I do. Where's, how do you get money? I I run my own business. What do you do? I sell cars. I sell houses. I flip cars and I flip houses. If you go to my house right now, every car... When's the last time you flipped a house? The last time I flipped a house? Mm -hmm. The house that we're in now. And my mother and my grandmother pay us four fifty a month for rent. Hawk has multiple explanations for his income, but he hesitated in the beginning. This may indicate that some sources are not legal. Okay. When and, did they pay you last? Uh, we were supposed to get paid by them earlier today or yesterday. I don't know if my fiance had gotten the money. I know just last night I went and picked up two hundred and fifty dollars for car parts, and I can I can show you proof of that. Picked up two hundred fifty dollars from who? Uh, I I don't know. He saved in my phone as scrap buyer, and he he bought a catalytic converter that I got off of a beat up truck out back. The catalytic converter had a hole in it. It was rusted out. That's the truck that's sitting out back in the alley right now. I was going to take the because I got two two hundred or almost two fifty for the the there was two parts of a catalytic converter, and it cost me roughly eighty bucks to go buy a new one. That's a win-win situation when I can put a new one on for less than I can scrap the other one for. I got multiple vehicles that I legally own. It's a simple question. Were you guys arguing over money today? Mm, no. 
No? No. Okay. But there was a discussion over money today? There's a discussion over money every day. About you wanted her to pay something and she... No. As in... Every day, every day, no matter what, we would wake up. It's not talking about every day. Let's talk about today. No, today is not different than every other day. No, it is different. Why no, are you talking about today, today? What was the money issue about today? There was no money issue. You said there was. It's never an issue about money. It's whether a bill gets paid on time or... When do we see the kids next? But it's never an issue. It's us waking up in the morning and figuring out what we are to do today. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? I go to work. Okay. Well, we wake up in the morning. The first thing we do is we go to work. I'm sorry that I run my own business and I can work from home. I'm sorry that she was like my financial advisor, my accountant, my secretary. She basically did anything that I needed for my business. I was nothing but the meal. I work, I do the labor, I do the physical, everything. She would handle the books, the upkeep, the, the money owed out, the bills owed out. I would wake up every morning and I would ask her, what do we need today? If we're good today, then let's sit back, let's go out to eat, let's do this or let's do that. Let's go get high. Yep, fuck, let's go get high too. That was it too. Mm -hmm. if, if there was days that we didn't owe no money out, you're damn right, we'd sit at home and we'd get high. We've already lost our kids. That was the one way that we was able to numb our pain. Well, I'm, not lie. Your kids. I'm not going to lie about it. We would. We would get high because our previous caseworker... You know what I can say? The only thing I can say is thank God for children's services. Yeah. yeah. Thank God that those kids weren't in that house today. I know. I know. All right. So and we'll go across the hallway. If you want to talk to us some more later, that's up to you. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I mean, I, I still want to talk to you guys now, but you well, guys... we're going to go out to your house. That's we got to look and see some of the stuff that you told us. That's All right? Fine. See if it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense. Will you hear that phone? Yeah. 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 All right, Kendall. We ran out to your house real quick, looked at some stuff. Uh, before we left, you mentioned that you, you still wanted to talk to us some more, but you've been sitting here for a little bit, so you still want to continue to talk to us? I mean, yeah, but at this point, I don't, I don't feel there's nothing more that I can say that I haven't already said. All right. Well, that's up to you. Um, again, remember, we went over your rights, okay? Yeah. All these rights still apply. Again, I'll go over real quick. You have the right to remain silent. You have to not. Actually, you do not have to make any statements or answer any questions. You're fine. I, I, understand. I understand that. But anything you say can be used against the court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions, and to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you do not have the money to hire a lawyer, a lawyer appointed by the court, or a lawyer from the public defender's office will be provided to you before and during questioning without any cost to you. And also, if you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. All right. Remember all those rights? Okay, again, like I said, all those rights are still in effect. Um, one of the things um, I wanted to talk to you about was we were talking about money before we left. You said you'd gone over and you'd given your mother or your grandmother money. My grandma. Hawk shuts down when it becomes clear that the detective isn't going to give up on the line of questioning concerning the finances. And Judy Robinson, is that your grandmother or is that your mother? That's your grandma. That's your grandma. Okay, this is a written statement that your grandmother had done. Okay. I'm going to read it to you as best I can here. It says, Kendall came over here to take a shower. They had been cleaning. He said, 
and she had sprayed something in bathroom. He has asthma and said he couldn't breathe, so he came over here to bathe. He went back home, and shortly after she called to see if I had some money to help pay their tax money on house. We only talked maybe five minutes, then I was doing puzzle on phone, and I heard him hollering, Mama. I came down, and she was on the porch, and he had a towel and was holding it over the wound. He was calling 911 and trying to stop the bleeding. I then took the phone and talked to them until the police arrived. He just said she picked the gun up and it went off. All right, that's her statement. So why is she saying that she called over asking for money to help pay for the taxes on the house? Because like I said, where they pay us 450 on rent, we, we try to make sure that we pay the taxes before the 15th. She was just calling to see that if they had anything towards it, that way once we paid it, we wouldn't be broke. We had enough to pay it because I I had just given my grandma 50 to put on my sister's books. Mm -hmm. But we we collect from them that way <coughs> we don't end up flat broke in the end. <laughs> she said she sprayed something in the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, we went out to your house. Let's see, this is some photographs that was taken from your house here. This is the baseboard behind the couch. That's where the bullet was dug out of. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is a dowel rod that's going through the bullet where it goes through the back of the couch, out the back of the couch, and into that hole in the wall. And that shows you the trajectory of the bullet. Mm -hmm. And here you can see Detective Geiger sitting on the couch. This one you can see me standing in front of him with a, my finger pointed like a gun, where you can see how it goes through. Now, I'm not saying this is exact, but it gives you an idea of That's, the I, trajectory of this bullet. I do understand that that is a possibility of one of the ways, but I... I'm just trying to figure out how the way you explained she picked up this blanket and where she's hit in the upper left chest and an exit wound down somewhere in her lower back and the bullet being recovered under there. How, how is that possible? <clears throat> Like I said before you left, so honestly, I don't know. All I know is that she was picking the stuff up off the couch as I was walking out of the room. I, I, I can't explain the unexplainable. Well, I can there's, tell you we did find... There's things that I, 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 I don't know. We did find the blanket. There was the white blanket, and there's like the the purple, yeah. purple one. Yeah. The white blanket was on the couch. It looked like either she or somebody had been sitting on top of it, right where the bullet hole is. Mm -hmm. And there's, you can see where a bullet went through that blanket. But the interesting thing is, there's no burning on there. There's no stippling. You know what stippling is? No. When a gun is fired. The gunpowder that is in the casing ignites very rapidly, and that explosion is what causes the projectile to shoot down the ring, down the barrel. <coughs> All right, well, there's Sorry. portions of that superheated gunpowder that also come out the end of the barrel, and at close range to something, it actually sears or burns into it. It'll do it your skin, clothing, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. If it's close enough to the skin, it'll actually char it, or to a piece of clothing and one of the things that we don't see anywhere on that blanket is stippling 
or charring. Because it looks like that blanket was actually behind her, like she was sitting on that blanket when that gun went off. And the purple blanket, we don't see any defects to indicate that somehow the gun swooped up in this blanket and goes off. None of those things make sense, the way you're saying it happened. None of them make sense. Trust and believe that I agree that none of it makes sense. Kendall, were you trying to kill her or is this an accident? No, I was not trying to kill her. And so what happened? All I know is... No, what happened? Let's knock off the bullshit. I'm serious, sir. That story, that, no, you can't be serious with that story. Let's knock off the bullshit and just tell the truth. Because all you're doing is digging yourself a deeper fucking hole. It's time to just man up, man. I did shoot her. what? I did shoot her. You did shoot her? Why? No, I did. You, you can put words in my mouth all you want. No, it's not me like you just said did twice. No, I said I didn't. I did not okay. shoot my love, my life. I did not shoot my fiance, the mother of my child. I did not shoot her. Then who did? Nobody else was there. I know. Yeah. And the way you're saying it happened is not possible. That leaves one explanation. Well, at least two explanations. Either she intentionally shot herself in that fraction of a moment when I'm you not, said she picked up these I'm blankets and you walked she through. She shoot herself because she is suicidal. If you look, she was just in the mental ward not too long ago. Can you tell me how she shot herself? How'd she do it? As his story collapses, Hawk begins to grasp at straws by claiming Ramey shot herself intentionally. I don't know if that's what she did. I'm saying she was. Well, you were there. I'm saying she was picking stuff up, and when I went to walk into the other room, I heard a bang. I don't know if she mentally, physically, purposely shot herself, or if the gun had went off. I don't know. All I know is that our children now don't have a mother, and everything is is going to somehow get pinned on me because I was the only other person there. There's nothing else I can say. I don't know what else to say. You can start with the truth. I'm telling you guys the truth. No. When, did, okay. when was the last time you saw her handle that gun? Last night. Where was that at? In the living room. <clears throat> where was she at and where was the gun at? She was over on the other couch. And the gun was in her hand and she was sitting there spinning the spindle. What else was she doing with it? That was it. She was, was it loaded at that time? Yes. She was just spinning the spindle. And spinning it over and over. Because she she could hit it once and it'd go... And she was just sitting there spinning it while... How was she doing, doing that? Did she have the cylinder popped out? Or was the yeah. cylinder still in? It was still in. And that's the last time you saw the gun, or that's the last time you saw her with it? No, that was the last time I physically saw her with it. Did you handle the gun after that? No. That was, I was already on the couch, I was laying down, I was watching TV, we, we was in the middle of smoking a blunt, and I fell asleep. How do you think it would have been possible that the gun got into the blankets on the couch where you were sleeping? I mean, I, I don't know. The only thing I can think is possibly when I got up to take a piss, I'd, I'd thrown the blanket to the side. I, I didn't think that I'd thrown it on the table. The only thing I can think of is when I came back from taking a piss in the middle of the night and grabbed the blanket and covered back up. <laughs> and and I'm not even sure of that. I really I I don't know. I'm telling you guys literally what I do know. And I know it don't make no difference because you don't believe me. But it's not a matter of simply not believing. It's a matter of an unbelievable story. 
You know, if you yeah. came down here and told us something plausible, we might believe you. I know. That story is just not believable. I can't believe it. Not even, even me, as the person that witnessed, I, even I, myself, can't believe it. And I was there. Now, I know that don't say much, but there's... Uh, there, there's not words for for how unbelievable it really is. I realize that it is unbelievable. I realize that it is impossible to believe something so absurd. And uh, there, I mean, there, there's nothing. Yeah, that's what you want us to believe, the, right? I mean, you want us to believe that story, I, right? I, I, I don't really care what you guys believe now. I just know that from this day on, the love of my life is gone. There's, there's not much more to life now. I don't, I don't really care what happens to me at this point. Yeah, I've heard that song and dance before. Yeah, I believe you have. And you might as well just be honest about it. Because the story you're telling us is not honest. And you and I both know it. Believe what you want to believe. You believe what the facts show us. We've got to believe what the facts are. And they ain't the way Why you're telling people it. People lie. People lie because they're scared. Mm -hmm. People lie to protect themselves? I have no reason to be scared. Mm -hmm. I've already lost my children. Hawk doesn't seem to realize that having lost the children may have given him more of a motive to kill Ramey. I've already basically lost my family. I've lost the woman I've loved. I, I, I don't really have much left to lose. What about your freedom? I'm not free. If you ask my grandmother, she'll tell you multiple times I, I said it was better off in prison because I had less to worry about. I didn't have bills. I didn't have none of that. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to do with freedom. I. That's just got a matter of wanting to go out and no, take I, care I, of yourself. Of course, that's no, the best take care of you. I, I understand that. But what is freedom if you don't have nobody to enjoy it with? Really? Like you got an opportunity to go out and meet somebody else, and to find somebody else. You have all those opportunities. Yeah. And let's not sit here and play this melancholy boo-hoo, boo-hoo me. You know, you're giving us a ridiculous story. That's an absolutely ridiculous story. Yeah. You know, you're going to deny that you guys were arguing about money. Even when your own grandmother said she's calling over asking for money to pay for the taxes on the house. Ask, go you know, I mean, ask, do we, ask my grandma. Do we make this stuff up? We, we ask her every day for money. And, okay. and, and it's, okay, today... She she might say she didn't make it to the bank. Tomorrow it's it's kind of why are you asking grandma for money every day? Because grandma and my mom mm -hmm. are supposed to give us four fifty a month for rent. They play it off. They push it off. They postpone it. So we kind of have to stay on top of them. Who are That's, you paying this rent to? Well, we pay the city taxes on the property. We don't, we don't pay rent. They pay us rent because they live in mine and my fiance's house. The, the gig was me and Angelica bought the house. My mom and my grandmother were giving us 450 a month towards their rent. Now we would take their rent and go pay our property taxes with it. That way we could save up our money and invest towards another property or another vehicle. That's why we have 13 something cars at home. What are That's, your property taxes? I want to say they're like 439 or something. I mean, they're, they're cheap. They're, they're, I want to say 489 at most. I, I truthfully, I don't even know. I just, I know they're under 500. And, I know that last month we didn't get them paid until the very last day of the month. 
And that was on our own choice. So you're paying them every month? Yeah. We we bought the house. We got that we got the property on a quick claim deed. Mm -hmm. We gave the owner a thousand. Come to find out two or three weeks from the time we bought the house, it was due to be sold on a foreclosure list. As in like not we have this time to no nothing. It was on this date somebody else will own our house and everything in it unless we go downtown and pay two thousand and eleven dollars to the courts and then it was like uh four or six thousand or no it was uh five to six thousand on the back payment or the back taxes well i went down there with a, around eight thousand dollars and the lady because we had to have 20% down on the back taxes of uh, 21800 We had to have 20% of that down. Well, the lady let me be a little bit short on that as long as we paid the $2,011 to the courts. Well, we went down there and we paid that. She said she would start us out on a payment plan where it was for, it was either going to be three eighty nine a month or 4 and some change a month. And it's going to be every month for the next four or every month for the next five years, depending on which payment plan she was able to get us on. Okay. Well, she got us on a five-year payment plan, so I want to say it was the 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 489 for the next five years or for the next four years. I'm not sure. I just know that right now, if you look it up, it's like... Uh, 17,000 is what's left owed out. Everything else is paid up. But we can, we would bug my grandma and, you know, say, hey, it's the first, we want to get this paid. Asking for money daily is a bit excessive, and the detective believes it was because Hawk and Ramey were desperate for money. And then the second would come, hey, it's the second, we want to get this paid. Hey, it's the third, we want to get this paid. And it would always get postponed and they would always blow us off. Me and my fiance would not argue about money. The only thing we would argue is I would tell her we need to make sure that they pay us in a reasonable amount of time. Other than that, that's it. We didn't have no other problems. Our only other issues, truthfully, was our drug usage that we had started upon losing the children. Other than that, I mean, like, we would, we went out to eat at least once a week, mandatory, to nice places. We we always reminded to treat ourselves. The, the kids, we just took them tablets last week. The week before that, I mean, like, we've, we've, We've even managed to spoil the kids, knowing that they're outside of our home, knowing that when they come home, they might not even have the things that we gave them, just because we knew it, it, it was something that they would enjoy. The, the tablets they could use to take pictures of the baby, learn how to walk. We, we didn't have financial issues, really, between us. It was... The fact that my mom and my grandma can can collect unemployment for all these months and get money each week for free and turn around and ask us where our money is when we work for our money. We didn't get unemployment. Uh, we had her weekly check and we had whatever money I was able to make throughout the week. And they could hound us asking us where our money is or asking us why do we need their rent money to be able to go pay our taxes. And so on and so on or how are we broke and da 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 and the only thing we would ever argue about is with them saying as in it don't matter what we do with our money the point is you still owe us on rent that's a, that, that was the gist of anything that we ever argued about and it was never between me and her it was between us and my mom and my grandma other than that I mean we, we didn't really we didn't really have any arguments other than Oh, well, we got fucking dirty laundry that needs done, or I'm the lazy asshole that hasn't finished painting the bathroom yet. 
I mean, it's it was normal day to day, normal life bickering. That's all it was. We didn't. We, we never had an issue with money. So what was different today? You know, I've been trying to figure that out. I have. And the only difference today was the fact that I had went next door to take a shower because she blew the bathroom up. Other than that, it wasn't it wasn't nothing different. I mean, you you agree, don't you? That it's not possible for I, the gun to uh, shot her. I do agree. You go that way, the way if she's picking up. I I I. So that leaves one or two options: she I, shot I mean, herself, or you shot her. I mean, I I want to agree with you. So what was but, today that would make her shoot herself? I don't know. I don't know. I know she she tried to do it previously. And that was when my grandma took her to the psych ward. My grandma said she was going to take her to work one day. She never made it to work. She made it to the psych ward. It's kind of odd you're in the middle of cleaning up the room and tidying it up and everything's fine. And all of a sudden you just decide to just end it. We we wasn't even awake a half hour. Literally, I mean, I didn't even get clothes ready when I went next door and took a shower. I went next door and what I was wearing, and, and quite frankly, I I put the clothes back on. The same towel that I dried off with is is the towel that I held on her when she was bleeding. So this was a suicide, right? I, I don't want to say that, but there's nothing else that I can add. I, I know it wasn't nobody else in the house but me and her. Unbelievably, Hawk is going to try to pass this off as a self-inflicted death, even though the trajectory of the bullet doesn't match. She's responsible. She took her own life in the story, correct? Is that what this is? This? It, it it has to be. It has to be. It, it's the only thing that makes sense. Because it wouldn't be that you did it. Because if that's the case, you tell us, right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself any other way. No. It just don't make sense to me why she would kill herself when we had a good life. Why'd you say you were going to kill yourself in the 911 call? Huh? In the 911 call, you said you were going to kill yourself. Because we had a good life. I mean, I did. I told my grandma, I said, if she don't make it, I might as well kill myself. Because there's, there's just, there's things in life that you, you can't, you can't, you can't remake something that you once had or you know some things you only find once in a lifetime I know that I'll never in my life find somebody else that was as good as she was to me ignored the fact that I had previous uh, previous offenses ignored the fact that uh, when I was in prison she didn't she didn't question why I needed money on my books or when I when I would walk out the front door and start my day for work she wouldn't question where I was going you just have a good day and I mean that's all it was to it I know that I'll never find somebody that truthfully loves me the way she did so did she deserve what she got no no More than once, everybody in that house, no matter which side she was on, would always tell her that she deserves better than what she gives herself. I'm talking about what she got tonight. She deserved that? No, nobody deserves that. 
Exactly. Or whether they then deserve somebody to come in here and say that they took their own life. You're right, but you know, as much as you can try to turn it on me, that's the only other thing it could have been is. That's the only options, right? It was you or her. The accident thing, that's mm-hmm. bullshit. That's, that's just, if, that's. And if it's, if the accident is entire bullshit, then she, she killed herself. Mm-hmm. And as, as much as it hurts to say that, there's nothing else it could have been because I was not even in the same room at the point of the time it happened. You sure? Yes. I was in the dining room where the table is. If you was at my house, you know where that is. So within a matter of a couple of feet from her. Yeah. If you were to take a polygraph on this, how do you think you'd do on I'd pass. Depending on what questions you guys asked. It depending on if you guys are trying to set me up and ask what questions. questions. You think we should ask you? Just I mean outright. Did I purposely kill my wife? Did I intentionally shoot my wife? Did I shoot my wife? Those would be questions that could be asked that I know for a fact in the bottom of my heart that I did not do. Did you accidentally shoot her? No. Because he keeps saying purposely. Purposely and intentionally. Intentionally. Something happened, Kendall? No. Again, because we're left with one of two things. This is either cold-blooded murder I realize that. A cold-blooded, deliberate act, or this is an accident. Now, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, but the way you keep lying and spinning shit, but I'm not it lying. makes me wonder if this is a deliberate thing. Okay. Because we went from the last time you saw the gun, it was sitting on the table. Now, it's the last time you saw the gun, she was spinning the spindle. No, 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 that's, that's you where said. you're wrong. You said. That's what you just you, said. You had I asked. Saw her spin you, spin you had asked. And you fell the last time I seen the gun, the last time I seen the gun was on the table. Now, you want to switch the words. You can switch the words all you want. He asked specifically, when was the last time I seen her with the gun? And my correct that's answer for that right. was when she was spinning the spindle. That was not the last time I seen the gun. The last time I seen her with the gun was when she was playing with it. But the very last time I seen the gun, was when it was on the table, next to where I fell asleep. So you can try to put the story together how you want to put the story together, but if that's how you're going to do it, if you're going to tr- switch up my words, then I do want an attorney present, because I'm not going to have you change my story on me. I know how it went down. You can run it however you want it to go down. When did it get from her hands to the table? That's all right, Kendall. We thought you were more of a man than that, buddy. Take it how you want it, sir. Absolutely. I just, I know deep down that I've been I know honest. you do. I know you do. You know deep down all the good Am stuff. Am I staying in here? No, you're going to jail. That's fine. Do you want me to follow you out? Nope. The officer's going to come in and put handcuffs on you. Okay. Go ahead, stand up and face that back wall. Put your hands together like a prank. You good with him, sir? Yeah. Okay. Have him dress him in and bring your clothes back. Right. Now that Hawk has seen the detective will not believe his story, he is choosing to act righteously indignant and demands to speak with an attorney, something he should have done at the beginning of the interrogation. Kendall Hawk pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter with a three year firearm specification and having weapons while under disability in the death of Angelica Ramey. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me further, there is a Patreon link in the description where you can do just that. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.